guys, how are you doing? I'm Madhvi from tarotcallyspeaking.com where I write about all my experiences with my tarot cards and I also review decks and books, uh, you know, tarot decks and tarot books and I discuss the storytelling method uh, where you can use storytelling techniques to read tarot cards and of course I do read tarot cards for a living and I also mentor and teach students who want to learn how to read tarot cards. So if you're interested in any of that, the links are in my in, in the description that accompanies this video. So go do check it out. Um, now for this video, I'm going to be uh, reviewing this very lovely deck that Amazon kept throwing in my, you might be interested, you might be interested, you know, every time I went on Amazon. It was showing up and so of course I took that as a sign and I, besides I love tattoos. So if you're following me on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram you may have seen that this month I have been using this very very lovely deck the Tattoo Tarot for my card a day readings. So if you want you know I'm going to be doing a review come flip through of this deck so stick around. And be amazed. Hey, so here we are. So as I kept saying a little bit earlier that uh, Amazon kept throwing this deck in my uh, in my path. So I'm like, okay, cool. This is a sign, you know. <laughs> so I, of course, checked it out. I did the Google image search and everything. You know how it is. You're, you have to do your due diligence research. And guess what? I fell in love. All right. So this is a deck that has been created by uh, Lana Zellner, if you can see her name here. She also goes by the name Eight Coins on the internet. And it's there's quite an interesting story behind the making of this deck, the creation of this deck. Uh, but let, let me get to it one by one. As you can see, this is the cover. It's a very lovely sturdy box. I'm just showing it to you on all four sides. And this side, and this is the back of the box. All right, it's a very lovely uh, box, of course, very sturdy US game, so you can, you know, they're gonna do a good job, right? And so this thing very smoothly oops, opens up, and we have a book which is again not by any means a small book. It's a book that fits in with this box, but it's pretty thick. And as you can see, the pages are, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but they are thick and smooth and glossy. And on each side, on the left side, you see a, a, a full color image of the deck, of the card, sorry. And on this one side is the information about the card. And it's very much, uh, you know, it, it reminded me of how the books were for the Japaritzi Tarot, again, uh, printed by uh, the US Games Company people. So very good quality. And of course, because of the way they have, uh, you know, used uh, the coloring on the side of the, uh, you know, page here, you can make out uh, which suit it is even when you're like this, you know. So we have, these are the major arcanas. Then this white little, it is your suit of wands. Then this white patch is your suit of cups. Then this white patch will be your suit of swords. And of course, pentacles, right? So this is how easy they've made it to just, you know, flip through so you can look, uh, you know, if you specifically if you're looking for the meaning of a card. Uh, just let's quickly, uh, you know, go through it. We have your table of contents, the dedication and everything. Now, this book really talks about, uh, about, you know, the journey of Lana Zellner. She used to be, uh, an architect. All right. And from there she has transitioned. I mean, she always did love drawing and, and illustration, but from there, she transitioned into a tattoo artist, all right? And this is where this uh, deck actually owes its origins. And that's why the whole tattoo art uh, comes into play here in this deck is because she has 
uh, you know, switched careers from architect to tattoo artist. And it's, it's just, you know, brilliant. This deck was kind of her journey uh, into that whole process. And, you know, so this, you have the whole story here, which is really amazing because it, it always, always, always fascinates me how people, you know, get inspired and get into uh, the artwork because honestly speaking, I was, uh, I mean, I used to like art and artwork and, you know, as, as it was limited to comics and stuff, but you know how it, how it is. But ever since I got into tarot, I started appreciating illustrations a, a lot, lot more than uh, what I used to do, say, 10 or 15 years ago, right? Now, uh, she goes into every, you know, detail about her process and how she uh, used this technique called the spit shading technique, which a lot of tattoo artists use for drawings. And, you know, it's, it's just lovely. You have to read it. It's worth taking the time to read through this. And of course, we start, uh, you know, looking at all the cards. You have your major arcanas and all. The... Now, what you will notice, though, I want to bring to notice this little thing. You will see right at the bottom of each. In fact, it's even there on the cards. If you want to see. Sorry. Sorry for the shakiness. Uh, if you see right at the bottom, you'll see drawing number 33 or, or you know, drawing number 29. She has, uh, you know, she didn't draw these cards in order. That's what happened. She hasn't drawn these cards in the order that they appear in your deck. Right? So High Priestess was drawing number 67. So, just for fun, if you want to, you know, see the way the, her journey evolved, you can look at the drawing numbers and arrange the cards in that order and just see what the journey is and believe me you'll be amazed right so empress was drawing number six and you you could probably if if you're really into art illustration and stuff you can see how her illustrating you know her style has evolved and matured as she kept drawing and so you know it's it's all about that it's it's really intense it's really fun and as you can see as you you know here you have your uh uh how do you say it the major arcanas and the suit of wands again the the, the the pattern is the same you have the card image on this uh, on the left page and the information about the card on the right page there are no keywords there are no upright or reverse meanings separately given no no specific keywords for that but that's okay if you're into tarot you can figure that stuff out right and my thing is just look at the image, make your story, just go with it. So that's your whole entire deck. And I'm sorry, the whole, you know, the book. Let me have a look. Yeah. And then, of course, yeah, this I, I'm sorry, I almost forgot about this. There is the eight coins rose tattoo spread, which is a very interesting spread to do. Uh, and guess what? Uh... The deck also includes this uh, little poster. You can can you call it a poster? Okay, let me move things around. This little oh, I don't know if you can see it, but it's 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 a it's a lovely uh, glossy uh, you know paper that has the spread uh, the a you know the rose spread sort of marked out on it. So if you're keen, you can just put this on your spread cloth and draw the cards and, you know, there's a spread for you. It's pretty interesting. If, you know, you like uh, to do that, you have your <laughs> spread there with you. Oh boy. This is my thing. Every time I open up stuff like that, I have to like, okay, how do I fold it back now? <laughs> I always get confused there. Wait. All right, okay, I found it. All right, Whew. right, <laughs> all right. Now, of course, the deck is nestled in this little, in this lovely box here. And I'm gonna pull them out, and you have your lovely cards here. And just give me a second. I will be right back after I move the camera. So we get a quick, lovely view. So, finally, I have been able to adjust my camera just right. And here we are, the lovely cards from the Tattoo Tarot. 
and this is the full card which is drawing number 33 now i find this imagery to be a little bit different and a little bit amazing and a little lot of lovely actually first off i like how she's Put the paper scrolls there with the, with the name of the card uh, you know I, I find that so amazing right secondly I like how the fool is a girl just you know and look at all the symbolism is packed with it and and the fun part is that if you look at the book so you may be like oh so what does it mean well look at the book the book has all the information right here Right, the red feather, the red jewel show that the fool is led by her mind and heart with pure passion, fire, enthusiasm. The white flower symbolizes the joy and that we, we may find if we take risks, follow our hearts and dive into the unknown. And the snake symbolizes the ever-looming dangers in throwing caution to the wind. So, I mean, wow. Okay, just wow. I like how it when the book explains the symbolism right because otherwise you're like so what does it mean i mean if it's very similar to right away you can say okay all right i know what this symbol means and what the you know within this context etc but otherwise you're like hmm what does it mean and you're often left with no recourse but to just make th things up using your own uh you know instinct but i like it when the book has that information mm. Oh yeah, and of course the card back because we'll re we I read reverse cards and I believe most of us should or uh, do re read reverse cards. So I like it when the back of the cards is reversible, upright or reverse. You really cannot figure out which side this card is, which is good because then you know when when you're after you've shuffled and stuff, you really don't know whether you're picking up an upright reverse card. And very strangely, that is good. Okay. So that was your fool card. Now the magician card, instead of showing your traditional magician, it only shows the hand. And we have the, we of course have all the sword symbols. We have the wand, the sword, the cup and the pentacle. There's also the rose and everything. You know, I think this is a, a, a lily or something. Let me, let me look. This book really uh, does give all that information yeah and Ouroboros is shown emerging from within the fire lilies and foliage surround the magician's hand the scarf on his thumb creates an infinite loop oh interesting the snake eats its own tail and the ribbon goes on forever huh pretty interesting huh The High Priestess. Check how, you know, the moon is created out of this scarf sort of thing around her. I'm, again, I'm tempted to, sorry, look into the book. <laughs> Oh, the red flower is a pomegranate flower. A crystal ball floats between her horns, showing her psychic intellect. Cross on her cheek shows that she is highly spiritual by nature. The ram's horns on her head symbolize her determination and her strength. Hmm. Interesting. All the ram's horns would be on the emperor, right? Like Aries, but okay. Ah, the empress. Emperor. Wow. Ankh, the ram's head on his crown. And the, you know, the orange background. Wow. The Hierophant. Now this is some really different, uh, I would say, symbolism. Let's have a look. 
something we won't don't normally see this crows the hierophant is shown as to as a two-headed raven oh wow uh, an incredibly wise and mystical bird his two heads symbolize the many facets of his mind all of which are a part of the greater whole wow okay the hierophant is not held back by closed-minded thinking this is a very different hierophant here hmm? the scarab beetle over here represents the movement of the sun and the passing of the days growth development and the metamorphosis we can achieve through higher learning and self-development wow okay this is super cool isn't it <laughs> isn't it awesome the lovers ooh, ooh. this is a very different level we have two snakes here and two roses i believe hmm? two snakes are shown entangled within themselves enjoying each other's company and becoming one union within wild pink roses the snakes remind us of the temptation and lure that often accompanies our relationships. Wow. Very interesting. This is what, what kind of temptation? It may be the temptation to stray from the relationship or the temptation to consume or control your partner or the temptation to completely lose yourself in the process of growing your partnership. This is very interesting, right? very interesting it, it like i like i keep saying it's worth taking the time to read through the book and and understanding what these symbols mean and what what they're trying to talk about because that is going to help you come up with your meanings and and your keywords for i think that's why the keywords are not given in the book because that way you can develop your own uh you know and and use them uh when you're doing your readings the chariot is this is lovely kind of does remind you of the ride away chariot in a certain way with the background and this stuff here mm. strength that is card number eight in this deck very lovely the ouroboros and the She's like wearing the head of the lion there. <clears throat> the hermit. Wow. Love this card. So beautiful. Check the lantern. Pretty, no? Wheel of Fortune. Justice. Card number 11. So I guess you could say this deck follows the ride awake pattern. Hmm? Twelfth, the hanged man. And instead of a man, there's a woman, which is again lovely. <laughs> and it looks like she's one of those women who do acrobatics and stuff. Yeah. Death. I guess if you are into tattoos and stuff, this is an image we do see often. Uh, you know, the skeleton and all that. Temperance. Wow. This is a very different kind of temperance that you see here, right? Very different from your other temperance cards that you may have seen. Definitely, it was pretty fascinating, very, very interesting. Oh, yeah, and I would like to kind of say something about the thickness of the cards and the kind of matty, glossy, not, not very glossy, but very slightly gloss, but very matte kind of finish. Very nice, like, like a nice balance between matte and gloss. I don't know, I, I don't know the terms or whatever. I like how it feels. Okay, let me just go with that. I like how thick the cards are, I like how they feel. Because <laughs> I don't want to get caught by someone saying, hey, no, it's not matte, it's this, it's that. I'm like, okay, I'm not the expert, but I like how thick and how nice it feels. And I love how they shuffle. <laughs> this is your devil card. Wow. 
that's a very evocative devil and I like how there are two women here and so you know it's pretty interesting too this is a scary guy scary devil <laughs> in that way you know scary looking devil all right the tower hmm this is an interesting tower right you don't see the falling man woman do you see it do you see there is have they already fallen? Are they going to fall? The star. The moon. Wow, yes. <laughs> the sun. I love this sun. Very happy energy card here. The the sunflowers are also very, very pretty. I What I feel, I don't know, it's like they have little tiny universes there, I would say. Like two, you know, <laughs> I don't know, just, just that's what I feel. Judgment. Again, a very different uh, image of the judgment card than compared to what you would see normally in Rider Waite base decks. It's pretty interesting. Again, I will urge you to spend some time with the book getting to understand this imagery so you don't feel lost when you see the cards in a reading all of a sudden. And now the world. Okay, so that was your major arcana. Now let's look at the suit of wands. We have the ace of wands. Two of Wands, Three of Wands, Four of Wands. This is beautiful. Five of Wands, Six of Wands. Seven of Wands. It's interesting that the heart uh, sort of shows up here. And again, I let's look. Let's look at what the book has to say. A clenched fist reaches out from a human heart, clinging tightly to its wand. Six of the wands point towards the heart as if they are attacking it. Vibrations pulsate from the heart, showing that it is still alive and pumping. The fist is standing up for the passions of the heart, demanding others listen and refusing to give up in light of confrontation. The fist is strong, powerful and fierce. It will use its wand to knock down competition, protect its passions, and complete its plans. Wow. <laughs> Heart is still strong. That's what this one means. Imagine how, how the connotation will change when it, let's say, it shows up in a reading. How would you interpret the story here? Like, I don't know, there's of course the, because of the presence of the heart, there's all the health related uh, connotations here, but what, what, what other interpretations could you come up for the seven of wands here with this heart imagery? Tell me in the comments below, okay? <laughs> ah, the eight of wands. I love this card. This is also there, this image is there on the back of the book also. Mm -hmm. It's very pretty. Nine of Wands, Ten of Wands, Page of Wands, The Fox, <laughs> Knight of Wands. Again, I love how that's a lady. Hmm? Queen of Wands. And she's got the words burn on her, <laughs> tattooed on her hand there. Very interesting. And the king of wands. 
All right. Now the suit of swords. Ace of swords, of course. And see how interesting you have these, the, the, the crown, the top of the crown. It's kind of like your, you know, talons or nails. A sword can cut, yeah? Two of swords, God. Look, first of all, the two of swords is an interesting card to begin with. But then sometimes you look at the drawings of some two of swords and some of them are so gorgeous. This is one of them, okay? For some reason, I'm very fond of looking at the twos of every deck. Two of wands, two of swords, two of cups, two of pentacles. And of course, you have your three of swords. Wow. Oh wow, just just wow. <laughs> Four of swords, a very different imagery here. Again, spend some time understanding it, letting it kind of tell you its own story. Okay. Maybe you know that's kind of why I don't want to read out more from what the book says. If you're gonna be buying the deck, and I totally think that you should buy it, spend some time with the uh, you know but what i would say is before you open this and look into into the imagery of that particular card uh you know i i would say just um let your imagination and and your mind come up with an interpretation or 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 a, you know wisp of it anyway and then sorry then look into the book and see how it kind of matches up or how it adds more dimensions or shades to the meaning five of swords <laughs> kind of has a surrealistic bent to it six of swords again very gorgeous very gorgeous i don't know i, I find myself also looking at the six of swords card a lot Seven of Swords. Oh, ah, Eight of Swords. <laughs> this card. Hmm. Nine of Swords. And of course, the Ten of Swords. Ah. Page of Swords, Knight of Swords, it's a pretty interesting knight there, Queen of Swords, I like how she's, you know, we have the head on top of the <laughs> sword there like that, <laughs> and of course the King of Swords, with I think there's a what feathers and butterfly thing in the beak, maybe of an eagle or some such. I don't know. Very interesting though. Now, the suit of cups. Ace of cups. Two of cups. Three of cups. <laughs> Four of Cups. It's like the cloud is crying. Hmm. Ah, Five of Cups. Six of Cups. Hmm. Seven of Cups. She looks like a very interesting, like, genie coming out of the class there. Hmm? There's, of course, the snake. Potential dangers. Mm -hmm. Eight of cups. Nine of cups. Very nice. And, of course, your ten of cups. Page of cups. It's a fish, right? Knight of Cups. It's 
the heart tattoo there. <laughs> Queen of Cups. Two mermaids coming from there. Hmm? And the King of Cups. And finally, we come to the Ace of Pentacles, the drawing, I believe, that is there on the cover of the box. Two of Pentacles. Gotta love the twos, yeah? Three of Pentacles. Are these viewers making stuff? <laughs> Four. The four of like just like the four of swords, we have the four of pentacles again. Pretty interesting. So take your time and get to know the imagery a little bit. The five of pentacles. Oh ho. Six of pentacles. Seven of pentacles. Wow, you gotta love the eight, the eight of pentacles. Check the pencil behind the ear. Oh, I love this little attention to detail. Nine of pentacles. And the ten of pentacles. Very reminiscent of the, <laughs> the right away ten. Pentacles there. Page of Pentacles. Knight. Oh, I love this one. Queen of Pentacles. And the King of Pentacles. Now, included with these cards are some four cards which uh, i think this is your nine of wands which was of course uh you know it, it you you would if you remember the nine of wands is there uh, kind of kind of as is it is drawing number one though it's pretty interesting there let me let me pull out the nine of wands i have here oh this is interesting yes i remember this one is drawing number one, but this one says drawing number 79. It is the same imagery, but a slightly different uh, drawing style. And so she kind of included these four cards in here for, uh, you know, reference or collection or interest and stuff. See the, the three of cups is very different. Uh, three of Cups compared to the Three of Cups that we have now. Let me, yeah. See, this is the Three of Cups that we have now. Hmm? And that was drawing number two. And we have drawing number three of the star. And again, Kind of, sort of, similar to the final version of it, which was drawing number 80. Hmm? And of course, your Ten of Cups, which was drawing number 4. This is, again, very different from the Ten of Cups that we have now. In the deck. What I believe is before the idea of, you know, when she started, uh, I, I think when she started working uh, on the idea of making her tarot deck, working on illustrations, making a tarot deck, these were the first four images that she ended up drawing. And I believe what she did is to decide which uh, card to start drawing, she would, you know, mix her deck and just pull one card. And that was the card that she, whatever card that she ended up pulling is what she ended up drawing. And uh, I believe these were the first four images and then, then she kind of revised her style 
and she said no instead of the you know drawing kind of f thing feel that i am that she has worked over here she want to go with the tattoo uh, feel so that's why but then you know she had these drawings so we have them you know she's very sweetly made sure that they are included with the deck so you know just just so you are you know it's kind of very sweet because that makes us more kind of part of her journey uh you know and it's very nice very very intense very interesting and yep all right so as i was about to kind of wrap up the <laughs> review i looked at that 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 uh, you know the spread that was there in the in the end of the book the eight coins rose tattoo spread that figure why not why not why not <laughs> I just hope that I'm able to capture, uh, you know, the whole spread, how it looks like <laughs> in the space that we have, you know, the frame of the camera and whatnot. But as you can see, it's pretty, it's, you know, the, the feel, whatever of the deck, the matte, glossy, whatever feel makes it very easy to shuffle the deck. And the cards may be a little bit bigger, a little bit but are okay i mean you can i have tiny hands but i can hold them pretty okay uh are they bigger or are they i think they're pretty normal the normal normal card size okay oops and now i you honestly don't know what uh topic or issue the cards are going to talk about so i'm just going to say you know tell me what i need to know the most right now Okay, and I believe you have to pull seven cards. Card number one, this is the core issue that this reading is about. Past feelings or attitudes about the issue. Your past actions. The universe's advice. So I'm I'm kind of looking at the book that's over there. <laughs> the universe's advice for the present. This is you need to objectively consider forces beyond your own feelings that may be influencing the situation. There you go. Card number five. Your present feelings and ideas. Card number six. Where the situation is headed. And card number seven, the universe's advice for the future. Take this with you as you move forward. And pretty smooth the feel of the cards from the get-go. So that's lovely, of course. Okay. So card number one, the core issue that this reading is about and that's two of swords reversed yeah okay so the fact that either i am unable to take any decision or maybe a certain decision is already kind of out of my hands uh it's about taking decisions decision making that could be very well be the core issue now card number two goes here i believe okay and your past feelings or attitudes about the issue we have page of pentacles okay and that basically tells me that in the past what i have felt about taking decisions again you know because the page of pentacles if you see it's all about newness and and doing and bringing some new things into reality so in the past my attitudes in terms of decisions were if if it's going to start something lovely if it's going to begin something lovely then i'm i'm kind of all for it 
whether to take a certain decision or whether to just go with the flow and what the outcome was going to be you know how it would kind of you know manifest in reality is what dictated how i took my decisions in the past and my past actions this is not because this is you know this card is reversed right you have the knight of pentacles again reversed here so again in the past this is a very different knight of pentacles and i, I have this feeling you know there's a pillar there there's a knight there so you know in the past of course i felt that no matter whichever way i went for things i didn't feel because pillar shows up this, this support angle there i didn't feel supported no matter what i did or didn't do and so i kind of felt uh maybe a little upset about things perhaps as i you know did or did not take my decisions now card number three and then we have card number four which goes up top here uh is my advice for the present and we have two of wands reversed do you see that all right there's a two of wands reversed right basically the cards are saying i'm not ready to move forward yet i'm not ready to take that next step into the adventure kind of uh, you know energy there i'm just i need to maybe just you know figure out where i'm at before i go forward in any uh, way then now card number five comes here and we have see two knights like that it's a very interesting mirroring we have the knight of swords reversed again and basically for the future the present feelings and ideas i don't want to half as hardly go and do something right like the knight of swords reversed tends to do i don't want to i'm holding myself back i'm trying not to half as hardly get into any situation and do something or take any decisions or take any actions without really thinking about it without any having you know having some you know process about it and where the situation is leading is five of cups so one way or the other my and this this could be indecision one way or the other my indecision is going to lead to me uh, you know whoa this is reversed though you know one way or the other i guess maybe not <laughs> jumping into something like that crazily will lead to me not being sad or not losing something important so yeah taking the time to think things through will help me and then of course card number seven is universe's advice for the future and oh la la now we have do you see that i'm gonna show her to you you have the queen of pentacles so again there's all these pentacles energy page knight and queen coming together yeah, there's a lot of these court cards. So the Queen of Pentacles, basically, wait and watch. What I'm seeing here is like, you know, like how the flowers are blooming around her. Now I'm seeing that, okay, you know what? Maybe right now is not a good time to be taking these big picture decisions and, you know, launching into adventures, right? Because ultimately what I want, how my approach is that it, I should have something practical manifest. And so... You know, I maybe I, maybe the universe is not supporting me, right? And right now, my even though I'm I may be feeling pressure to take any decisions about certain things, I should not do that because half as early if I go into the situation, I will end up losing what I already have. You know, you know, it's it's gonna be really bad. It's gonna be like a very sad story if I end up doing that. So I'm not gonna be doing that. In fact, the cards are saying, wait and watch and let things grow and manifest on their own naturally and so you know i would say the cards are saying in, in that sense don't be in a rush things will happen of their own accord and let let it happen let it happen okay i will <laughs> so i'm i'm sorry i can't fit it in the whole frame at once but this this is a very interesting spread this is a very interesting way the guidance came through for me right here right now for the, the issue that i was at hand so this was the eight of coins uh rose tattoo spread that comes uh you know in in the book that's described in the book So what did you think? Isn't the Tattoo Tarot an amazing, amazing deck? Are you going to buy it? Of course you're going to buy it. I'm 
telling you to buy the link of course is if you want to go buy on amazon the link is again going to be in the description accompanying this video so do click that link it is an affiliate link i do get tiny bit of commission from amazon but it doesn't affect the price that you end up paying for the deck so go buy it and help a girl out okay because i really all that money that comes in from the commissions really it's not much just me it's, it's not it really is not whatever comes in i use that i just use it to buy more decks anyhow so I hope you really really like the video thank you so much for taking the time to watch it if you are really interested in how i use this deck to do my card a day readings follow me on facebook twitter and instagram because i've this month month of august i'm going to be just using that deck to do my card a day readings so you should you know what to do you go there follow me and you know <laughs> and and every day in your facebook feed or instagram or or twitter i'll be there with my reading and everything so you can totally look it up and then of course uh if you want to subscribe to my newsletter or you want to subscribe to this video channel do just go click subscribe and that's it seriously that's free and so stay in touch keep in touch and i do a bunch of videos i mean i do reviews and then i do spread videos and i talk about how basically i you know i don't know if you've observed that every beginning of the month i also do a video where i talk about the you know i i mean at the end of the month i will do the theme intention video for next month but then the, that very month the following month of course i take that theme and i run with it and I see what guidance the cards have to give me. So it's like how to use the cards in practical life. It's, I, I call it my tarot in real life. There's a playlist I've made in my channel so you can go watch it. Um, I've done a bunch of videos there too. So you know, how can you use your tarot cards to guide you through real life? Anyway, so that's that. I will see you again next week in another video. Until then, stay good. Be good and play with your cards. Bye for now.